All right, man. Episode 102. Holy shit. Obviously, the, the on-field product is not there. I have to address for those that are watching on video, a little bit of a special opportunity here to record post-game for the Cincy game. So, I mean, the emotions are fresh. The emotions were very fresh after the Philly game, too. Kind of a similar script there with the officiating that we'll get into and everything. But, you know, hopefully hopefully we sound good coming through these new lav mics. Yeah. Whole new setup well, the, and everything. Um, the S uh, shield is not super great on them. But <laughs> other than that, it should be a pretty good um, product. But there was a lot to overcome tonight. There was a lot to overcome in the Philly game for our team. Cushing was just super firing in that press conference. We could kind of flash the clips that we have of that as well. I was waiting for someone to ask a question. Huh? <laughs> I've never been a guy to, I mentioned it in the last game, after the Gabe Siegel penalty, which I get. It's a penalty, but I can see why they don't give it. You know, Philadelphia's a big team and there's a lot of pressure on referees against these teams. Cincinnati at top of the league and, you know, ultimately nobody can tell me that there's not a goal. And I can debate it in many, many ways. But I will say it like this. The referee's performance was embarrassing. And I'll take you back to December the 11th, 2021. Same guy. Go look at Portland's goal when the ball comes in the box. And have a look at the, the challenge on Maxime Chanel that he didn't give. There was no foul. And then go have a look and compare Gabe Siegel tonight. And it literally is like somebody driving a car into somebody. And me, uh, tonight's like me flicking my nine-year-old on the ear. I, 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 I can debate it up. And ultimately, for me, you know, I can be emotional and I can be frustrated because we're losing football games. But I feel for our guys in the dressing room because we asked for two or three things tonight. Performances have been okay. We asked for two or three things tonight. And there's a little bit of low confidence there. And there's a bit of frustration. And a moment like that is huge for a team like ours. And all I ask is for the referee to understand the game of football. Soccer. But, you know, we got two games to talk about. And, you know, I guess where would you like to start? I guess, I mean, you know, we kind of did skip Philly. Just, just based off of the timing of everything. Unfortunately, that game just didn't go our way, and it was something that you know we had we had a feeling that if that game didn't go our way, then the quick turnaround for this game would be something that was positive, mm -hmm. um, and that there really was no way that we were going to come, come away not winning this game. Um, we score early on, which um, typically is the death of a team at Yankee Stadium if you are not wearing blue. Yeah. Um, but a soft. I mean, I would call it non-existent foul. Cushing called. called it non-existent. So I'm, no, I don't know if the man has a, a fine coming his way or not. But we're, I mean, we're in the Apple TV booth right now. Uh, we were watching Apple TV, obviously, as the game was going on to see kind of, you know, maybe what we hadn't seen with our own eyeballs live. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, the foul on, on Gabe was non-existent. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if he really breathed on him. I mean, to, to call back a goal over it is, is uh, it's really unfair. And it's really unfair to Seagal, too, who, you know, we were talking about uh, what we wanted to talk about in this episode on the way up here. Um, a lot of time to think in that, that two-hour bumper-to-bumper traffic-filled ride. Uh, and you mentioned how Seagal has, you know, more or less been okay in the position. I mean, for being the only nine on the roster, there's going to become uh, situations where he has to be put into a lineup and he has to play. Uh you know, he was unlucky not to get that penalty against Philly. Um, it's just, it, it, it begins to come out of hand when the refs are, are taking so many things away from us. I think uh, there was a question on whether or not Jason should have had a penalty in the Philly game. And then obviously, I think there's a whole nother part of it. And, and we can just get right into the Philly game. The the unraveling right before halftime was, I, I think, obviously the dagger that kind of killed that game off for us. But it, it felt good when we went up one nil. We were obviously present at that game, too. Yeah, I think Nick Nick Cushing said it best in the press conference that, you know, they had two moments in Philly, and that's really that's what decides games in this league. Mm -hmm. There, there was there was two moments that they created. You know, I think uh, FIFA players and uh, between the smoke stacks, they call the FIFA cheese, mm -hmm. which is true. You know, your team kind of starts to relax into the idea that, you know, you're you're getting halftime soon, and you make two mistakes on the bounce. And never kind of recover from that. Mm -hmm. But the but the big issue with the Philly game is that we never really were given an opportunity to crawl back from that because the dagger was given from the from the referee with the penalty with the for penalty. them. Correct. Yeah. Which you know, nine times out of ten, yeah, that's probably getting called a penalty. I don't really know the the rules specifically when something starts out of the box and, and continues into the box. I'm assuming, you know, they called it correctly because I I do have faith in refs even after tonight, but. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I don't know. 
like Nick put it in in the um, press conference as well. It's it's either a free kick and a red card or a penalty and a yellow. So it's hard to call. Yeah, and I think the big point with him too was, you know, he he agreed on the basis that if the ref was going to call the entire Philly game, the way that he did, then Tiago Martins was a penalty, um, but Segal was then also blatantly a penalty. So, so yeah, you know, I I I kind of echo those sentiments. Um, it you know, I think we were really down after the Philly game for sure. Obviously, the emotions that go into a matchup like that are are beyond when you're just playing any random team you know the, the Red Bulls and the Phillies um so it's never tough to take that loss and then I think you know it kind of compounds on top of that was the sixth game out of uh six losses that we had at the the time and now we're you know number seven here um with the tie mixed in there but it it doesn't help I imagine that the locker room is like super low um and you know digging yourself out of the hole when the hole keeps getting deeper and deeper and at times it's not necessarily your fault or you know product on the field hasn't looked great, but there's many moments that have added to this that are outside factors that we did not contribute to. So yeah. climbing out of that morale-wise has got to be difficult, chemistry-wise, everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, the way that the press conference ended today, um, you know, I wish that there was a couple more minutes for a couple more questions mm -hmm. um, because I, I wanted to ask, you know, just a simple question is if, if the locker room is truly still together. Because if the locker room is still together, then the idea of, you know, the cushing out debate and the, the questions about Lee and his job and a couple of the other conversations that, you know, pretty much center around if people are going to be sticking around. Mm -hmm. I think if if we get solid evidence that the locker room is still together, I think that those conversations go away. Yeah. Because if they're together in the fact that they know that, you know, Nick really, I mean, and not to keep making excuses for him, but that he really was not back in this window. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, do, is this team really any better with the addition of Santi and Sands? Well, we know, I mean, even with their addition, we know it's still worse just because of all of the additional departures. Right. So, I mean, we can get into a little bit of, of the Cushing out talk, and then maybe we'll we'll do some finer analysis on Cincy, and then, you know, get out of here before the, the big bad Yankee Stadium security guy <laughs> comes and kicks us out. But for me, I felt pretty fiery. Uh with a lot of the Cushing out talk, I don't, I mean, I'll just, I'll just lay it flat. Like I don't agree with Cushing out. Um, I think what you just alluded to, I don't think he's been given the right pieces at the moment to succeed. Now, if we lose two to three games after we bring in a nine and the nine has not produced at all, then like that, that conversation is going to be started instead of like on one block at a time. I think we can leverage the results that we've seen here into that conversation as well so it's not to say like hey throw out all these results and don't don't apply any uh blame to Cushing right but I, I think that's it he doesn't necessarily have all the best pieces we have a lot of talent on our team but then you know on a night like tonight and even last week Alenich is gone who is uh for all intents and purposes our wonder kid um Talis is obviously hurt who hasn't been good but there's always a moment where he can create something he would have created that Gabe Segal penalty against Philly uh, had it been properly given. Um, and then obviously our, who is our Iron Man at the moment, or at least was Tiago Martins is out as well. He had a tough game against Philly. Obviously he gets hurt and causes the penalty, but even before that he got kind of spun around by Carranza on one of those long ball goals right before halftime. So there's not a lot of pieces to work with, you know, when you're bringing in Seagal's to play and, and stuff like that, it's, it's going to be tough to get points to say the least. Yeah, I mean, as far as the cushing out debate for me, even without a nine, I mean, he's coming up on, you know, if he loses two, three more games, that it's kind of, a, it's out of our hands, it's out of his hands. Mm -hmm. Even without a nine, I mean, you you do have a striker on the team. Yeah. And you do have... Um, a lot of talented players. A lot of talented players, yeah. And, and there is a point where, you know... We've known that we haven't had a nine since the beginning of the season. So this mm -hmm. is a lot of time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of time to tactically figure out, okay, well, I don't have a striker. What am I going to do in place of a, of a striker? Or tactically, what am I doing, um, you know, to make up for that deficit uh, in the roster? And um, it just gets to that point where you, you just can't, you, you can't, you can't defend it. Yeah. Right? So, But I, I don't want Nick to leave. I think he's a great guy, first of all. I think he's a great, um, you know, piece of this team, and I think he represents 
the culture of this team in New York very, very well. Mm-hmm. I think he's the, like, in, in the sense that Twitter kind of brought people closer together, he brings the club closer to the fans when he does things like go out and get a beer with, with uh, fans after the games yeah. and stuff like that, win or lose. So I, I don't, I wouldn't, I think losing Cushing would be, it, it would hurt more than it would help. Yeah. Unless no, I, you're I bringing agree. in, you know, a very, very good world class manager that's been proven in multiple leagues. Yeah. And I don't, sorry if you do hear any background. Noise. We, <laughs> yeah. We are, uh, the, the, the real MVPs that are uh, the Yankee Stadium staff obviously are, are taking care of the work with everybody out of the building. So shout out to them. But I, I don't want it to come off like, I'm not giving any merit to the Cushing out uh, conversations. Obviously, there's a conversation that needs to be had. You're you're right. Yeah. I think I think it even becomes out of anybody's hands if we lose another two or three games. Right. Because it, it does get to a point where when it's ten losses, when it's nine. I mean, at what point is it that you know somebody has to be the fall guy or or David Lee or Brad Sims are getting pressure from CFG as an organization to make a change because. You know, CFG most likely, uh, I'm sure they're very intelligent and they're very invested in their product, but they're most likely not watching every NYCFC game and they don't understand the nuances that all of us do as fans. So they won't know, right, that it's, you know, referees cause these last two games and then uh, injuries cause these two games. They're just going to see 10 losses in a row. Right. And this is our billion dollar venture into uh, American soccer. Right. This is not something that we can have. So. I think you're right that you know the longer it goes, um, regardless if player key players feel like he's the right guy, it it may become an out of their hands situation. But I guess maybe we can talk talk a little bit about Philly and then you know get out of here, or Cincy. Cincy. Sorry, Cincy. Yeah, I mean this game. I felt like the last two games were the worst two games I've seen officiated ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand you know part of that is going to be my bias towards NYCFC. You know, when I see something go against NYCFC, you know, obviously it is a the initial reaction is to be skeptical of of what made that decision. Um, but you could literally make probably a 20, 25 minute video from the last two games with clips of fouls that were not fouls, that were soft. Specifically the Philly game, I remember uh, Gabby Pereira going down the right side and literally not like nobody the philly player didn't touch gabby gabby didn't touch the philly player the ball just was there and the ref called a foul out of nothing out of thin air you know you've got guys getting hit in the face where nothing's being called they're not looking at it you have today um the clear and obvious error is being checked and it takes five minutes Mm -hmm. clear and obvious takes five minutes well, so here that's 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 it. That's the quote, right? And yeah, and if I it's think it's clear and obvious. It's five seconds, right? And, and to slip in like one more quote for me, I think the thing that highlights it more than anything, and you know, uh, might be bush league memory here, but uh, I saw a tweet. I want to say it's from Hudson River Blue. They said uh, Cincinnati had seventeen fouls on the night and only four yellow cards. We had twelve fouls on the night, so five less, but we had. Eight or nine yellow cards. So we yeah. had we had double the cards. We, we and, ended with seven. Yeah, and a, and a, a much less number of fouls. Um, and to be honest with you, the fouls that were given uh, hurt us way more than the fouls that were given against Cincy. Um, uh, there were three major referee decisions in this one that obviously costed it. That Tavon tackle that ended up leading to a free kick goal. I saw people tearing Tavon up for that. Yeah, that was no, that wrong. that was a a, a handbook tackle. He only got the ball, it, uh, and I'll I'll say this. We saw it live, and we saw the replay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. He did put himself in that predicament to have to make that tackle uh, by getting beat and spun around, but then he did the hustle that was required to go and, and fix that issue that he created, right. um, and unfortunately he was punished for it, and then the, the team was punished for it because uh, Boreal, I think, is, or whatever his name is. Uh, Mario, Mario. Yeah, hit, Mario. hits – Honestly, a world. I mean, Fries is not saving it. Baraz is not saving it. it. It was top right. I don't know. I don't know. But it's on the side for me. But there shouldn't have been a free kick. Period. Shouldn't That's have been a free it. kick. And then the penalty. Right. Alfaro did not. I I honestly think in that situation, I think it's the same guy, Boreal, that is being more dangerous than Alfaro is in that position. And either way, yeah. if the Jason penalty isn't given so, against Philly, because the ball can't be played, there's no way Boreal is playing that ball. It's out. It's out of bounds by the time right. the whistle's blown. 
So not to mention that, um, I know obviously Nick pointed out the fact that um, there was an offside player that had interfered, interfered with that play. Um, I think it's incredibly dangerous to put your entire foot across somebody's body to kick a ball. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's a foul on, on the Cincy player. Um, but also, when Alfaro is making that decision to try to clear the ball, he's not knowing that somebody's putting their full leg across his body. Mm -hmm. Like It happens that fast. Um, so, yeah, I think the referee 100% essentially awarded Cincinnati three points today. They did. Um, he he single-handedly costed us three points by, one, disallowing our goal, which would have given us confidence, at, at the very least, to go on yep. to continue to push and fight. Um, then giving, the like you said, the free kick that led to directly to a goal and then a penalty that directly obviously leads directly to a goal yeah um so the ref scored literally two two goals for cincy and took away one of ours yeah so i think i don't know maybe maybe in the nature of the show we we wrap things up by you know trying to find some positives um turnbull was a nut turnbull yeah I, and anybody dude that group chat you go off for me you that go off group chat me. sometimes i wonder if you guys are watching with like sunglasses on honestly sunglasses that like the lenses are painted black or they're in reverse or something. I don't know. Drunk, drunks, um, drunk goggles. To sit there and say that Turnbull had a bad game, I because just... he sliced a volley on his right. First that's shot. the only thing that I can think of. And to be honest, I would have to question like he did get beat on the the one goal from outside of the box, but like there were but how many... after him three to four guys that could have also made a play to fix it. So. Whoever your favorite right back is has been beaten in that situation. And guess what? It wasn't on their it wasn't on their first MLS start. MLS start or first league start. Yeah, I, I I venture to say that a lot of people when they watch, they're too quick to look for um a blame or a reason why something happened. Sometimes, believe it or not, it has nothing to do with your team being bad in that moment. It's one hundred percent another team being good. Yeah, and you know, like let's say um, Goody's free kick way back in the day. I hate to say that it's back in the day at this point, but it is. It's back in the day. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, was that the goalkeeper being bad or was that Goody being very good? Yeah. NYCFC fans say it was Goody being good. Right. Their, their fans out that night were probably arguing, oh, he's got to get that ball. He, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that's – I think we have to take a step back sometimes and look at the total view of our opinions and, and realize why they're happening. So, so Turnbull good. Um, Turnbull was great. For me, my – my man of the match would probably have to be Kufre. Um, I think it's a bit of, and, and that comes from uh, him being out of the team for so long and there not being a great reason. You know, we kind of discussed him being iced out, for lack of better terms, for Kevin O'Toole, who uh, us included, but a lot of other people think is not as quality as Kufre. And the salary suggests that. The, the league that Kufre comes from, La Liga, suggests that as well. So for him to come in, I mean, he was unlucky not to, not to leave with a brace tonight, honestly. And I think... Gabby has looked great too. That's that. Gabby's been our star. No, I want to say it was two goals in two games because Gabby right. fair and square scored yeah. a goal tonight. Um, one hundred percent. So, you know, I know all star voting dropped today. Gabby is probably the only player, maybe Sands, that even deserves a shout from our Richie. team. Richie, Richie did look. Richie made the team look a lot better once he came in. Keaton as well looked very good early, but I think you kind of hit the nail on the head when we were watching live. He started to get really frustrated since he was definitely able to get his in his head and. I don't know if Miazga was in Chino's head or Chino was in Miazga's head, but Chino was definitely in Miazga's head. <laughs> yeah, Chino was trolling the shit out of Miazga. I don't know who Miazga thinks he is. <laughs> Ever since that Mexico game, and, and the shirt was made of him, and the whole that. Yeah, he, thought like, he, was he a thinks superstar. that he's like seventeen feet tall now, and he's confident. <laughs> and dude, he's a uh, he's literally just a Chelsea reject that happens to play in the MLS yeah. now because but, he literally can't do better. Yeah. But yeah, I thought I thought Keaton looked good early. Unfortunately, I think the frustration kind of took away from his game, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I hope you know we see more of that moving forward. Um, and then I, I guess I'm not sure if there's any positives beyond that. I mean, do you have any that jump Alfredo? Out to um, surprised with him coming back. I think that's a player that we've missed dearly. Not even a uh, you know his his skill tonight was one thing. I think defensively he lacked a little bit, mm -hmm. but just the his his ability to create. His and, ability to, to lead. And his assist. Was disgusting. I mean, we might not. It checks every box. It, it checks your. I don't know if Timmy is like a worldwide known thing. Oh, really? I tweeted I it like, like everybody a, knows I it. I know. But I think it might <laughs> Just our friend group. It might be like a Coventry, Connecticut thing. 
Oh wow. Yeah. Well, well, so Timmy is Timmy, just Bali. Yeah, you first time hit something. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it checks the Timmy. It checks the he he kind of tossed a no look in there. Yeah. And then a, a Travella as well to place it right on Kufre's head. So, you know, shout out Alfredo for that. And yeah, then, that was class. You know, as a CDM, if we don't see much of you, you're probably doing your job right because you're just cleaning up work and, and we're not getting mad at you for anything. So kind of the same thought with Sands too in that vein, but Sands, I don't know. Yeah, I, that I might think, be all of them. Honestly, like I really couldn't point out a performance tonight and say that they played poorly. I think Keaton, once he was unnerved, was was he dropped in quality at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, he was playing very well. I, that curling shot, um, you know, almost goes in. You know, that could have been the moment that bring that bring uh, brings us back. Yeah. Um, you know, Gabe looked good for moments. I think he was probably the yeah, not not to say it this way, but he was the worst player on the on the field. Yeah. Um, just because some of the things that he tried didn't really come off, but he's a young player, and that's going to happen. But this team needs a win so bad. I I I I can't imagine getting the Monday and not having a win or a draw against the Rose here <sighs> too. Here, um, and you know, I hope. Yeah, and it and it it does it feels kind of twilight zoning because the Bronx is you know typically the home base. Um, you know, City Field has has definitely become a away Just from New York home base. In general. But the Bronx has always been uh been the spot. So, um, I th I think we probably do we probably do at least leave or I guess stay home with a point against the Revs. Um, but I felt the same way going into this game. So we're gonna have to see what happens. Um, I guess oh some I mean we're we're bad at podcasting, but I guess we'll do our housekeeping at the end of the episode instead of the start, so that and we'll cut that as well. Yeah, so that nobody has any idea what the housekeeping is because who's listening to us blab for 40 minutes. But this guy was obviously on uh, Beyond the Smokestacks, Coach Joe, Davi, Christian, a lot longer than usual. So you could get a lot more uh, opinions from this guy. Um, I think maybe I'm, I'm soon to make an appearance. Not sure how soon that is going to be. But I even learned things about you that I didn't know from that. So there's probably a ton of stuff that you guys can find out if, if you go and listen to their episode. And then um, shout out Daniel. City field game against Philly, you know, we connected with him at the fan fest beforehand. Um, you know, super cool to meet you. We always love, you know, hanging out with fans and stuff like that of the team and, and sharing thoughts about NYCFC. So we appreciate you guys for listening. We appreciate NYCFC for even, you know, the little opportunities that randomly come up like this are, you know, things that we've only ever dreamed of. Uh, I mean, yeah, we're literally sitting in the, in the Apple TV. We asked if we could record in the, the, the press box and they Honestly, said, Hey, just pop in that room right there. Just, we kept getting booted <laughs> yeah. from everywhere we, we got went. kicked everywhere we tried to record from. So, so you know, shout out them for the opportunity. And I think tonight was probably one of the, the most interesting press conferences I've been a part of. So I love I love those opportunities too. So wouldn't it be possible if if obviously people didn't watch and listen along. Um, you can follow us at Post Ninety Pod everywhere. Uh, we have some press conference clips up there. We might mix them into this episode or not. I know we're trying to get this out quick, so I'm not sure how crazy the editing will be but we're headed home two hours to connecticut oh so. man <laughs> was trying to, you heard the z's on the way here so you don't have to hear him on the way home <laughs> yeah um no nah, i'll probably hear him on the way no nah, yeah. we're gonna honestly we, like as soon as we turn this off we're, we're gonna just keep talking about the game um, i'm sorry to audio only and, listeners but this guy just to explain what you're talking about on the way here i'm driving uh it is it's broad daylight 5 p.m so like normally this man would be at work <laughs> And he's just right. uh, in the car. <laughs> so um, we'll catch you guys next time and see ya. Thanks. Peace.